Hello everyone, welcome back. So this time we're talking about flow work and the energy of a flowing fluid. Flowing is the key word here. If the fluid is moving, this is probably going to be important for you. Okay, so flow work or flow energy is simply the work or energy required to push the mass into or out of a control volume. So here I have my control volume, we're seeing a section of it, and I have some small specific volume of my flow. I'm trying to push it in. To do that, it takes work. How much work? Well, we know that work is equal to a force times the distance. You got that from physics. And in this case, that force is going to be a pressure, pressure from the flowing fluid. So pressure times area. And we know that area times length is going to be equal to volume. So we get that our work of our flow is equal to our pressure times the volume. So the pressure of the flow times the volume of flow I'm pushing in there gives me my flow work. Now, so long as I don't have any fluid acceleration, this will always be true, that the pressure I am feeling right here is going to be the force that is causing that work. If we have fluid acceleration, we would have to correct for that. But in any case we're dealing with, we're not going to have fluid acceleration. It's just going to be a steady state system. Okay, now why do we care about this? Well, we go back to our conservation of energy. So when I'm doing conservation of energy, I have to take into account all kinds of energy. That's including internal, potential, kinetic, all of those have to be taken into account. But um, if we start putting in this flow energy too, well, that's yet another aspect of this energy that I have to care about. But when I talk about enthalpy though, that's a term we've dealt with quite a bit, enthalpy automatically, automatically takes into account the flow energy. So if I'm calculating enthalpy changes, I don't have to worry about flow energy. I'm able to simplify my equation somewhat. So right here, theta, that is talking about the total energy of my system. And since my enthalpy is equal to my internal energy plus the flow work, I can then simplify that down. And the great thing is, in most cases, our kinetic energy and our potential energy changes are zero. So I would already be able to simplify this down to just looking at enthalpy. Okay, just a few little equations here to help you with your problems. So first off, if we're just talking about energy, then we're dealing with mass. If we're talking about power or um, energy per time, then we need to talk about mass flow rates. Everything else though is the same. I have my enthalpy, which takes into account the flow work plus the internal energy. I have my kinetic energy and I have my potential energy. So all of those matter, but honestly, for most of our problems, enthalpy is gonna be most important. And if we have no potential energy or um, kinetic energy changes, then we simplify this down dramatically. So instead of having to care about all those terms, we're really just caring about how much does my enthalpy change um, with time? How, is my how much does my enthalpy change from one state to the next? And if you're incredibly unlucky, you might have to integrate, but for most of our problems, we are not going to have to worry about integrating for these. It's just going to be state one, state two, and you'll do some math. So thanks for listening. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.